first uh, this morning early, I was called up by the vice president who said, told me that his father was very seriously ill and was called away to uh, Los Angeles. I uh, expressed my regret, of course, on my own, own behalf, those of all our associates, but of course he had to go. And I do know that I speak for all Americans in expressing the great hope that uh, the illness will prove uh, not too serious and his father will recover. The next announcement is this. Some weeks ago, both the Vice President and myself expressed a very great hope that this would be an open convention. I said as far as it could be for the nomination of the presidency, and he said certainly for the office of the Vice President. I talked to the chairman, permanent chairman of the commission this morning, and he said in order that there could be no uh, suggestion of a freeze out, he was going to call the roll of the states. There would be no uh, nomination and designation accepted until everybody had his chance to say something. But as you know, the only individual who's made any great effort to uh, produce another candidate has been Mr. Stassen. Mr. Stassen called to see me a few minutes ago. He uh, said from the beginning that he had great admiration for the vice president, respected the work he'd done in government, but that he believed there were individuals who would add greater strength to ticket than would Mr. Nixon. And in that belief, he had uh, proceeded uh, with his effort. He also said that no matter who the Republican convention should name as their ticket, that he wanted to be one of those who supported it enthusiastically and right down through the campaign and on from there. So he said this morning that after several days here, he had become absolutely convinced the majority of the delegates want Mr. Nixon. And in these circumstances, he no longer, and particularly since his own candidate had withdrawn so decisively, he saw no reason for uh, going further with his effort than he thought in order to get his own position clear before the convention and the American public, he was going to ask the, national, the uh, convention chairman for permission this afternoon to second, or is today? Yes. Uh, this afternoon to second the nomination of the vice president, Mr. Nixon, for renomination. Uh, now, I repeat that Mr. Stassen has from the first stated and expressed his admiration for the vice president and he just merely believes now that there is no possibility of bringing in any other candidate who he believes would be strong. That are the only announcements I have to make, uh, gentlemen, and now we'll go to questions. Mr. President, could you tell us what you told Mr. Stanton? I told him that I would come right down here and announce it to this group so that um, I could express my confidence that the Republican Convention would receive his uh, statement exactly as he stated it and meant it, and that they would uh, accord him the courtesy of a real hearing. Mr. President, Mr. the New York Times, is it your intention, sir, to have Mr. Stassen back on the staff and on the team again? When he's, he's never left it except to take leave. <coughs> so, he's leaving the spot. So, yeah, so far as I'm concerned, I have no other plans. Mr. Mr. President, Charles Shutt of Telenews, do you believe that now he is going to second the nomination, that the Republican Party has now had 100% harmony within its ranks? Well, I don't mean to say that there may not be someone else uh, nominated. There may be. I don't know. But after all, I've been here much less time than you people have, you know. But Mr. Stassen is convinced that the mass of the delegates wants Mr. Nixon, and therefore the best service he can perform now is to show that he is a team player and getting on to the, to the uh, job in this way. Mr. President, Clark Bionest, did you at any time prepare any list of uh, other Republicans who would be acceptable to you as a running mate? No. As uh, I told you once in Washington, everybody knows that in 1952 I did uh, prepare a list of some uh, five or six, I've forgotten the exact number, and gave it to the group uh, that, uh, was a, uh, that visited me uh, to notify me of my nomination. Actually, I, having been in office three and a half years, we having a record on which to stand now, I think it is well known uh, that a, uh, those people, I think, are well known that uh, support the progressive platform in which I believe. Therefore, 
any of them that the convention would believe to have national stature and who I would hope would be younger than I am uh, would be acceptable to me. Mr. President, uh, President. Mr. President the United Press, have you ever uh, thought or considered anyone else with this to make some as a running mate this year? Well, you will remember for quite a little while, uh, Mr. Smith, I didn't know that Mr. Nixon was going to run again. He took quite a considerable time after he and I first talked it over to make up his mind. And during that period, I thought of a whole group. And I told you once, the only reason I didn't name them, because I'm proud of them all, is that finally someone might uh, bring up a name and uh, I'd say, no, I wouldn't want to run with that person. It would be only for some uh, reason that I couldn't think of, but I didn't want to run that risk. President, President Marlon Aerosmith, the AP, uh, well, as you know, the Democrats made some pretty sharp attacks on you and your administration last week. There's some words around that you're pretty burned up for, about that. Can you tell us what your reaction has been to that criticism? I never answered criticism in my life. In uh, war, I was called reckless one day and a coward the next. And uh, you get used to it. Now, as I say, the Republicans have a record. I think I have something of a record. I stand on it. And I don't believe that kind of attack will do anything but rebound upon the people to make it. Mr. Chairman, Chair, NBC, your colleagues say there's a lot of enthusiasm out in the, out in the top panel. Do you see any danger of complacency about the members? Well, of course, the, uh, the party in power always runs the uh, danger of complacency, but I think that our people are all roused up to the very great necessity of continuing the kind of program that they have been supporting for the past three and a half years, and I believe you'll find in every state in the Union, and indeed down to every precinct, the kind of work that is needed. To win a uh, Roberts of Newsweek. Sir, to clear up yes, this uh, vice presidency matter, uh, is it true that you came here with the intention of interviewing prospective candidates for the vice presidency? Not in the slightest. Mr. President, Don White at New York County. How actively, how actively do you plan well, now, Mr. Whitehead, won't you let me be nominated before I start making plans? <laughs> really, I, I, haven't, I haven't any plans beyond those that have already uh, been discussed and announced. President, Robert Reagan, you look awfully well, sir. Will you just lay that uh, scurrilous rumor that you uh, have to go back to the hospital after the evening? Well, I never saw it except that but Mr. Haggerty did come in one day and rather laughingly asked me if I was going to have another operation. I said never. But uh, no, no doctors ever even suggested it. Never. Miss uh, Craig. Mr. President, May Craig, the report of the name, Pat Carroll. Have you now already talked with Governor Dewey about running for the Senate in view of Senator Lehman's withdrawal? Well, I never have. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Dewey came to see me just um, two or three days before he came out here, maybe the day before. And I recall that the only thing he said about politics was uh, some expression of thankfulness that he was out of it. So it didn't occur to me to uh, bring up that subject. And uh, I haven't heard it discussed. If I, if I thought it were a good thing, why I'd discuss it with him personally, but I have nothing to do with New York politics. Well, I'll hear the Washington Post. Well, Mr. President, down at Panama, you made a remark about not having recovered your strength. How do you feel now, sir? Well, I told you at the same time, though, uh, Mr. Fowler, that I was getting stronger every day. Now, I find that uh, when I get out behind the White House and try to hit some balls, after a little while, I seem to begin to drag the club, which I don't like. But uh, otherwise, I feel about as good as ever. Mr. President, Robert Spivak, New York Post. You tell us, Mr. President, what do you what do you think of the candidates chosen by the Democrats? I wouldn't express an opinion at all. Of course not. Mr. President, Mr. Staffan, why do you have to do with the Mr. Staffan, give the reasons for this move to set the Nixon's nomination? Yes, I thought I expressed them very clearly. He said that the mass of the delegates unquestionably wanted Mr. Nixon. And since he had from the beginning said, that is he, Mr. Stassen, had said, I am going to support the Republican ticket no matter who is on it, this was the best way he thought he could show his determination, his enthusiastic determination to do just that. Mr. President, Mr. Smith, you can Governor Stassen has said repeatedly here in San Francisco over the last few days that he believes Mr. Nixon would detract some millions of votes from the ticket of the Now, he changed his mind about that. He didn't even mention that. He said that uh, 
exactly as I've told you. He said that he's convinced the mass the delegates won him. He wanted to show his readiness to support the ticket no matter who named and this is the best way to do it. Mr. President, Clark Ryan asked, uh, do you think it might be possible to uh, nominate a stronger candidate than Nixon? Well, I wouldn't know. I, I uh, personally, as I've told you people many, many times, I felt justified in, in commenting on Mr. Nixon because he had held a job. I thought he did it in extraordinarily good fashion. Matter of fact, as you all know, he's been brought into the affairs of government much more closely than as far as I know any other vice president has ever been brought in. He's done everything I've asked him, beautiful. So that, so from my viewpoint, as far as efficiency, dedication to his job, loyalty to his country, I think that he's as good a man as you could get. I think this guy. Yesterday, former President Lewis said that there are some that there are some members of both parties who are out of their proper spirit at home. Do you feel as anyone in the Republican Party who's been in the wrong spirit at home? Well, <laughs> I don't think I better comment on that right shooting from the hip. Um, I guess some people said I am. But uh, I believe certain things very earnestly, and it seems to me that the mass of the Republican Party has gone along and believes in general those same things. You don't believe uh, President Google was talking about you, do you? I don't think he was. No. <laughs> Did anyone else ever come to you suggest that he would like to run for the fight? No, the only people who ever come to me said that they didn't want to. They said that they had been named and uh, or been suggested. One or two cases, clubs had been started. And this includes indeed Mr. Stassen himself, where clubs were started. And these individuals had merely said, uh, we don't believe, or he didn't believe that he would be the man to do it. Didn't want to do it. Mr. President, of Baltimore, son, would you comment on the platform that was adopted last night? Is it satisfactory for you to run on? Yes, it is. Mr. President, would you care to comment on the importance of electing a Republican uh, Congress in the fall? Well, I have uh, discussed this point numerous times. This is what I will say at this moment. I believe that as a normal thing, our country will be best served when the White House and the Congress uh, are both run by the same political party. For the simple reason, you can then fix responsibility. Now, I am not going back and compare the uh, different qualities of various presidents at times in the past. I merely say that if there is a Republican president elected, then I think there should be a Republican Congress on both sides of the House. Mr. President, uh, of the New York Times, sir, did you ever at any time make any objections uh, to you or anybody well, the funny, I, I've, I've seen, uh, you say objective tests, I've seen polls of various kinds. Some of them in one area indicate one thing, in other places they indicate another. Now, frankly, uh, this could get a little bit embarrassing because all the polls that I saw showed this, that any vice president seemed to reduce my percentage just a trifle. And <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want by any manner of means to say that there aren't many younger men in this party that uh, could do even my chore as uh, well, or even better. There, but the fact is, that was the case on all of the, all of the uh, polls I saw. I think this uh, Did you discuss any California politics with Senator Tico and all this morning? <laughs> Not that I recall. We uh, talked, generally speaking, about national politics and what they were going to do. Mr. President, the President, thank you for If you were a delegate from Pennsylvania, would you vote Well, I think that I can be excused from not uh, uh, answering iffy questions, and for this reason only. Not that by any manner or means, knowing what I do, would I consider him unfit for the office. But there are many people that could be brought up, and there would be many considerations that I would have to take into uh, mind if I were in that position. But so I'm not going to express to anyone where I think Dick Nixon knows what I think of him. I think you know what I think of Dick Nixon. This Mr. gentleman. Henry Brandon of the London Sunday Times. I wonder what sort of, whether you could tell us what sort of impression you are getting from Mr. Dulles' report about the situation in our country. Well, frankly, I'm a little bit nervous about talking because I'm not sure how much of these reports 
has gotten into the public press. And I certainly wouldn't want to be in the position of, of uh, damaging progress that has been made in these by uh, any immature disclosure. So if you will just pardon me, I won't say anything except this. In many ways, they've gone much better, I think, than they, we could have possibly expected three or four weeks ago when this thing first blazed up on the headlines of the world. <coughs> some months humans and individuals. I thought that taking it by and large, it was a very good forceful speech. And I, that's one speech I got to listen to all of them. Mr. President, Lawrence of the New York Times, you have said, sir, that you believe in an open convention, a free choice, and that all of the people who have come to you in connection with the vice president have said themselves that they did not wish to be candidates. Would you, on the other hand, have talked to people had there been such who wish to be well, I would certainly listen to their story, listen to their case. They, uh, and as a matter of fact, Mr. Nixon is one of those who urged me to do so. He said by no manner of means did he want to be a candidate where there was, uh, it just looked like it had been a steamroller to fare. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 